My name's Christopher Lennertz and I write music for film and television as well as video games. You are in my studio called Sonic Field Studios. We're in LA at, uh, in El Segundo. On any given day, we could be mixing or recording a, a big movie score and also have up to seven or eight different TV shows, projects, whatever's going on at the same time. Alex Bornstein has been working with me for over a year now and uh, is now sort of running the show in terms of all things tech, music, and audio. Chris has a, a pretty large scale setup that involves two Mac Pros, his sequencer computer on one Mac Pro and Pro Tools on the other for printing stems, and uh, two PC units that function as uh, sample machines. The way the signal flow is set up on Chris's rig is that he'll compose in Cubase, which is his primary sequencer. That MIDI then gets turned into audio via virtual instruments. That audio signal leaves his sequencer via the RedNet PCIe card and then gets sent over Ethernet cable into the switch and then into his RedNet 5s and then it leaves going into his print rig over a Digilink cable. And then once it's in Pro Tools, that audio signal gets sent out to our RedNet 2 over the Dante network and then from there it's converted from a digital to analog signal for us to monitor on speakers. One of the things that's really important nowadays is that everything needs to be split into separate stems. So if on a dub stage or a mix for a movie, they decide that they don't like the hi-hats, it's a lot easier to just have them press mute than it is to have them call me back and remix anything. We had been for a long time hoping that we could find some sort of a solution that gave us more potential with stem printing so we could print cues faster and more flexibility with that process as well and something that wouldn't you know necessarily degrade our, our signal flow. We had done a lot of research and we were ready to go to a MADI system and really we had actually we'd put together the equipment list we knew what we were gonna buy and I had called the person we had been ordering a lot of gear from and he was the first person to, to turn me on to RedNet. Once they showed it to us, we, we kind of went, oh my god, this is exactly what we're looking for. Before I implemented the RedNet system, we had a huge rack full of gear, and it was an Apogee converter, um, a Symphony, uh, Pro Tools HD stuff, a Neve summing mixer, and we had all this stuff, and we still only had 16 ins and outs. The RedNet, we can get 64 ins and outs both ways, either rig can use it. Uh, it's pretty crazy. We spent maybe several hours in a morning setting up the equipment, and once that was done, it worked. We would have failures of all kinds when we had our old setup before, with signal failing, cables going bad, things not talking to each other, and just, you know, a litany of problems. And with RedNet, I walk in in the morning, those boxes are on, and they've been locked ever since uh, we set them up. The RedNet 4 allows us even more expandability because any room that has an Ethernet connection, we can patch it in via RedNet 4 and record there. We could record in this room, we could record in another composer's room, and all we need is a network. And to be able to do that in this kind of environment is huge. Can take this from bar five? Sure, here we go. It's very important to me that I get as much time to write and conceive as possible and spend as little time on tech as I have to. To not be losing days of printing and all that stuff and be able to then take those days back to either finally see my, my kids or write better stuff, be able to you know, come up with themes without having the clock ticking quite as, as loudly, that's well worth it, absolutely.